hello friends you all voted and for some crazy possessed reason you all said that you wanted to see me film myself doing my pageant makeup now i'm not gonna lie your girl nobody clocks me on my makeup when i go to a pageant i did my research i have watched hundreds of hours of videos of tutorials and different things like that so I really do think that I have a bulletproof makeup routine, although I'm not a makeup artist or anything like that. So, you know, I always say take what is going to do well for you and leave the rest. It works for me, so that's okay if it doesn't work for you. But these are a lot of products that, honestly, like these are all the products I use every day. This is it pretty much. I just kind of, you know, vary the glam look depending on the event or, uh, or the occasion. So. I'm gonna be doing a glam pageant makeup look. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single little step. I am doing a glam makeup tutorial in depth with my membership program, so if you do want to get in on that, um, I will have openings in February, so that'll be for that class. But right now, I'm just gonna go through, if you're new to makeup or if you are experienced, this is the look that I typically go to when I'm doing my own pageant makeup. The only disclaimer I'm gonna give is I did say that I'm not a makeup artist. Unfortunately, I've just not had some good luck with makeup artists at pageants. I don't know why that is. You know, sometimes it's a professional company, sometimes it's students, sometimes it's just girls who volunteer. For the most part, it's okay, but when you have your own like solid routine and then someone else, like you try to tell them what to do, long story short, for the rest of my life, I'll probably just do my own makeup. I know that sounds so bad. Unless if like you're one of my like tried and true makeup artists, like my spray tan girl, she does makeup. I would trust her to do my makeup, but I've just had some situations that is the reason why I have this tutorial locked in. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, why is your tutorial or your makeup look so like bulletproof? So when I started competing in pageants in 2016, I did two local pageants that were both outdoor in June and in August. So you bet your bottom dollar that it was hot outside and we had to kind of go against the elements of the weather. I don't think I did my makeup for both of those, maybe just one, but the whole idea was that we were outside. So I had to do my makeup to accommodate that. Now as Miss Canada, I competed in Las Vegas and in the Philippines. Again, two very hot, humid places. Las Vegas is a, I forget the term, but they're just hot, right? It was 110 to 120 degrees every day. In the Philippines, it was like 80 or 90 degrees, but like 80% humidity. So my makeup did not move. Those competition weeks, my makeup was fierce, like did not move. Amen to that. So I'm gonna give you the tips and tricks and the tools and products that I use to help my makeup stay bulletproof for those competitions. Enough of my talking, let's get into it. Zooming ourselves up, we got our Stitching Sunshine Satin Scrunchie that we are gonna put our hair up with. And I'm mostly gonna probably be looking at myself because this is essentially the mirror that I'm using, so don't mind me there. But just so you can see, face has not been doing so great. You know, it's been the holidays and I haven't been getting any you know, outdoor sun and bleh, it's whatever. It is what it is. Well, I'll show you how to cover those up. For myself, I always go with my eyes first, mainly because when I have a full face of glam on, I don't wanna then go with my eyes and then potentially mess up my makeup. Like I said, I'm not a professional. So what I always do is I take my concealer or a primer and I prime the lids. This is Maybelline Fit Me. Go ahead and we prime. Beautiful. Then I have a little Real Technique sponge. It's so cute, so tiny. And I'm just gonna blend that all over by dabbing and moving the product around. Keep changing the angle because I wanna make sure that you can see and I wanna make sure we get good light. That the eyelids are concealed, I'm gonna take any kind of like nude powder. You can use your face powder if you want, but I use this Too Faced Natural Eyes color in Heaven. You can see I use it a lot because we're gonna use it to set that powder because if you gotta think the concealer is technically liquid. I forgot to dab off, that's fine. 
but this is just going to set the concealer so that way it does not move around on your eyes. Tap, there we go. Okay, let's move on. So I'm gonna do one eye on camera. I wish I'll try to get like as close as I can. Um, I'm gonna use the Soft Glam Anastasia palette just so I can be using one palette not reaching for a bunch of things but I'm also going to describe like the colors that you should be using and I'm sure you can find these colors in other palettes but you can see this is her here I don't think it's like the most amazing palette but it's pretty good it's pretty good and it's what she uses she is me so I'm going to take a super big ploofy brush I call them ploofy this is an M504, Morphe, Morphe brush, okay? I got my brushes from Morphe for Christmas from my boyfriend, so I have a huge set, so you're gonna see a lot of Morphe products in here. Thanks, Carlos. And we are going to go in with a burnt orange. So it's kind of like a uh, neutrally, more warm tone, light brown. It's the lightest brown in the palette. You can see it's right there. I'm gonna dab into that, tap it off with our ploofy brush. We are going to slowly in circular motions and in sweeping motions, we're gonna put that all on the outside of our eyelid and in the crease. And we're just going in circles and side to side. When in doubt, kind of grab the end of a lighter hand. It's easier to go on in with more. Yeah. That is that. Then, then with a smaller ploofy brush, so this one is also from Morphe, it is the M573. You can tell I'm cleaning my brushes after this, okay? Don't judge me. This ploofier brush, you can see it's got some brown on it. Um, I'm gonna go in with a darker brown shade. So this one's a little bit warm for what I wanna do, so I'm gonna go in with the shade Rustic, which is a darker brown got a little like chocolatey look to it, like some milk chocolate. I'm gonna tap into that and I'm gonna again, tap off the excess. This palette is known for having a lot of fallout. So I'm gonna do this eye on camera and I'm not gonna go as high as I did with that first shade. So I'm gonna concentrate it on the outside and then slowly like, just using like little flicking and circular motions, bring it in and around. Cause I don't want it to go all the way up. It's gonna be gonna look like a raccoon. It, it's not gonna look finished until the end, so don't judge. And once you kind of like where that's at, I always go just a little bit more, like I dab into that first product with the first brush and I just kind of go and I blend out the edges of those two, kind of marrying them together seamlessly. And I know inside as well. You can see both eyes have now that darker shade. So now, we're gonna go in with an even more dense, less ploofy-ish brush. Again, I'm cleaning them after. This is Morphe M433, 433, ploofy, it's shorter. So if I had to kind of show you, this was the second one we used, I'm pretty sure. And so this one is just a little bit more dense, so it's gonna help keep the product in a smaller radius of area. We're gonna go in with citrus umber, C cypress umber, not citrus, this ain't lemonade. Cypress Umber, which is a Cypress. Anyways, dark brown chocolatey shade, and we're just gonna put that like right on the outer corner. So we're gonna dab, tap, and again with that first one, but the first one we also kind of brought it up into the crease. We ain't doing that here. I'm gonna just kind of concentrate on the outside, dab it all on, and just slowly like blending it, the edges out. All right, so that's that step. So now, I don't really like any of the other brushes I have for this next step. So I'm gonna use that same brush and I'm gonna go in with the shade Noir, which is a black shade, just in case you really want that depth of your eye. So like I said, I'm gonna go in with shade Noir, the black shade, and I'm just gonna really concentrate it on this outer portion in case you're someone who, you know, wants that extra step of depth so it's like always on the outer because we can clean this we can clean this up after so we're kind of giving it a, a cat smoky eye so even if i just did that like obviously it's not blended out just kind of gives it a little bit of extra definition if you're a makeup artist please turn this off please <laughs> all i really have to say is just trust the process 
blend it out, blend it out a million times, go back, blend it out, blend it out. I'm not saying it all looks completely even, I hope it does to you, but we're gonna put on our lid shade. That's gonna fix a whole lot of things. All right, so do I wanna use one of these colors? Yeah, we will. Okay, I'm gonna go in with the shade a glistening, which is like super gold champagne-y. But what we're gonna do, and this is like my superstar tip, which every girl I think needs to know about, at least every pageant girl, is I'm gonna use the NYX Dewy Finish. And when I, I should say the brush, oh, I don't even know. It's a MAC flat brush, flat brush. Go, go there and be like, what's the flat brush? And ask for that one. So we dab in, we have the product, and then we're gonna spray the brush. So we're gonna, keep this a little bit farther away and we're gonna spray the product on the brush pretty generously getting the brush wet so now the product is it's just gonna make it so much more metallic so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of follow the natural crease but I'm gonna go a little bit more above it and do you see and so slowly we're gonna bring it to meet this outer portion of our eye. Now we're not gonna cover it up completely. We're only gonna go about two thirds of the way in. We're gonna use this nice like padding and sweeping motion. And then we're just gonna kind of dab out the edges right there. I should make Are you joking? That looks pro. Like that looks so beautiful. Whereas if we just went in with the product, it wouldn't have this like glistening look. And because we wet our brush, that product ain't moving. It's not going anywhere. Now, if you have hooded eyes, that's a whole different story, but I put it just a little bit more above the eye because naturally when I look up or when my eye creases, the product is already there. Beautiful. And then you can go over that again if you'd like. This looks so beautiful. You can see that's what we're what we're working with. So now I'm gonna go back in with that dense floofier brush and I'm just gonna dab out the edges. So I didn't pick up any product, but I'm just gonna kind of like blend those together by dabbing and patting. So you can see it just kind of like marries the edges together. In all honesty, we're gonna have false lashes on, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna, if, if it's imperfect, if it doesn't look like it's amazing and they're identical, we're gonna have falsies on, that's okay. So now here's where I recommend putting on eyeliner, at least like a black line, just because it's gonna help to blend with the lash line that you use if you are applying false lashes. I'm not gonna do that, because first of all, that's very difficult to do on camera, but what I am gonna do, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna show you another way to do this if you don't like applying eyeliner. So I'm gonna use this flat brush, again, Morphe M432 flat top brush. I'm gonna go in with the black shade Noir and I'm just gonna draw a line on my eye with this black color. I think you can see that this eye just has like that nice light black line. It's not light, it's black, but it's just got a, that little line which is gonna help blend out our lashes. It also just gives it a more like smoky appearance. We love it. So then what we'll do is you can take either a Kleenex, a cotton swab or a Q-tip and even with nothing on it, we're just gonna kind of go, try not to like drag your eyelid, but we're just gonna clean up from below the lash line to the, the end of the brow. It's gonna kind of clean up all that product. Plus any, ooh, um, bags under my eyes, not designer, we'll cover them up. So this tip is always really funny to give. I want to say I learned this from Nikki Tutorials or Jaclyn Hill or Kathleen like way back when. So for the primer, you know, do what's best for your skin, but I use the Nivea Post Shave Balm for men. Uh, for sensitive skin, I know, wild, right? But what this has, I'm pretty sure, from what I remember, is it has silicone. I think that's the correct ingredient. And so when you put it on your skin, it's gonna give it that tacky feel, which helps your makeup stick to it all day. I'm telling you, 14 hours, 16 hours, 20 hours, 
we don't move. The foundation doesn't move because of this bad boy. I am not even joking. My skin will still look the same. No joke. No joke. I'm going to show you here. So we're going to dab this out. Oh, not too much. Oh my Lord. And I'm just going to use my, my hands because my fingers are clean. Put it all over the face. <laughs> and I think it's like $6. Like, stop it. Seriously, stop. So after, I want to say after like a couple of seconds, you're going to feel it's got a little tacky appearance to it. That's what we want. That's what's going to help it stick. So I'm going to use the L'Oreal Infallible in 103. This is the matte finish because I'm a little bit more oily. This you can already tell. It's like a little bit darker than my skin, but I haven't been going out. I'm not buying a lighter shade just to kind of sit at home for. So we're gonna use her. I put a dollop. That's that, that's fine. We're going for full coverage. She's a full coverage product. <laughs> use the real technique sponge this I did clean yesterday and I'm just going to dab the product all over my face it doesn't look too much darker but yeah dabby dab dab really don't go under my under eye because we're gonna put concealer there and we don't want to put a ton of product as you can see we just go and pick up a little bit more pick up a little bit more Go underneath the chin ladies go underneath the chin like go all the way down the neck go like on your arms if you need no I'm just kidding but get that product everywhere there you have it honestly like this I could easily apply more I'm not gonna because I just don't need it like for the day's activities of sitting at home and scrolling on TikTok. but we've got a nice even layer of foundation Next thing we're gonna do is concealer. So the two I use, depending on the day, depending on what we're feeling, is again, that, that Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I have the shade 20, and I also have the Tarte Shape Tape in light sand. This one is like full coverage, concealing your deepest, darkest fears, no joke. So I'm gonna use that one just to show you. I do kind of mix the two, because this one is a little bit light. So you already know we're gonna conceal these bags. Actually, I think I probably need a new one. So I, it's so thick. Okay, I'm not gonna put more than that. That's already too much, I can tell. Oh my Lord, but we're gonna put it nice and underneath the eye, with a little florette. I'm gonna put it on the outer part of this, um, of my outer eye, because you can see that area is just dark and it's gonna help to create that like even stronger cat eye appearance. A Little bit on the chin, a little bit on the nose because you didn't put too much on there. Forehead and on blemishers and then if I wanted to because I'm extra and I'm going to I just mix over this concealer it just kind of helps it blend out a little bit more and matches it a little bit more to my skin shade and again I'm just I'm going a little bit like crazy with it right now but just so you can kind of see because we're in a pageant like we're, we're covering we're covering. Okay, so the tart does set really fast. I'll go over my moustache, over the chin. Now we're not trying to drag this down. We want to keep it high because we want this eye to stay bright. Look at that. Look at that. Stop it. But we dab. We dab. And again, we're using our beauty sponge to do so. Are you kidding? Girlfriend, get out of here. That is full coverage. Oh, dude on the nose, get that nice and bright. Go over these areas. Again, so dabbing on this eye. Making sure that we're not going over that. Get something on our face. Making sure we're not going over top of the of the eyeshadow we just did, but dabbing. Are you kidding? Do you not remember how dark that like the bags are still there, okay? Sista didn't get a lot of sleep last year, but at least now they're they're bright, they're awake. Look, just looks like I get, got a good night of sleep. And then we do the forehead. Forehead is a problem area, that's fine. How long has it been? 31 minutes, that's fantastic. Okay, we're not gonna make this 31 minutes. 
holy cannoli. We are covered, and you can see it. My face matches my skin a little bit better. Again, we're not professionals. So to set this, because like I said, the tart does set very quickly. We're gonna use the Laura Mercier translucent powder. I got the little sample one because I was trying to spend $40 on the whole one and I have a Morphe 438, M438. So all I'm doing, ladies, we're not picking up like an enormous amount of product and putting that on our under eye. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna dab all along that inner line, the underneath the eye, because there's just no need to put like a ton of product and when you put a ton of product, like we're gonna have cameras on us, we're gonna have videography, like it's gonna make your under eye look so white. We don't need a ton of product. It's getting all over me. This is fantastic. And so again, I'm just putting this on the places that I put concealer. All over the forehead. And of course, your schnoz. Then to really set everything in place, because especially I have more oily skin, if you have dry skin, you definitely do not need to do this. But I'm taking the Maybelline Fit Me powder, loose finishing powder in light medium. That's what she looks like. I'm gonna dab her on the end. We're gonna take the biggest, ploofiest brush that you own. This one is mine, the Morphe E41. Dab it there, tap it off, and we're gonna set the rest of the face, including our neck. Next, I'm gonna do the eyebrows. I'm gonna do them off camera because it's just not the easiest thing to film, but I'm using the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. I don't know if it has a color. 3.5? 3.5, yeah. We're gonna do that off camera. And the brows are on. Again, I think I said this before, but I never do my brows their justice. Like anytime anyone does their brows for me, does my brows for me, it always looks so much better, but we just, you know what, we do our best. We do our best. So this this one, she came out a little bit weird. This one's fine. She can stay for a party. And then we just brush it all out with a spoolie. Now this one, don't, don't look at that eye. Look at this eye. Ooh, look at her. She looks so good. Uh -huh, uh -huh. She's gonna get crowned. She will get the runner up. And just so I don't forget, typically I would do this at the end, but I grab the Anastasia Brow Gel Powder and I go over it and it's just gonna cement these babies in place. So now with a pencil brush, because we have all this product on our upper lid, we need to bring it down on the lower lid. We're gonna grab, I never bring black underneath the eye. Don't do that. You saw the bags, they were dark enough. We don't need black underneath our eyes. So I'm gonna grab the two darker brown shades and I'm gonna dab my pencil brush into them and I'm just gonna slowly put it on the outside, like that. Just like that. We're not gonna put a ton and we're not gonna bring it to the inner lash line. We're gonna leave it like that, literally. So it just kind of connects the outer part and the inner part together. Then with a small ploofy blending brush, I'm gonna go in with that light first brown shade and I'm gonna blend just like that. I don't like to make it too dark, um, but just enough so that it's the products underneath. So then just to kind of finish up the eyes, I have this flat Morphe M213. I don't know why it takes me so long to read these. So this is what it looks like. I'm gonna go in with tempura. I could go for some shrimp tempura right now. Tempura. We're gonna put this on the inner corner. And dab it like that because you can see this side of that eye it just brightens it up make adds that extra element of a glizzam that was a little bit much that's fine honestly it's never too much bring it under the under the lash line also gonna put that color right underneath the high point of the brow Stop. Stop, look at that. Ooh, love it. That's enough, that looks so good. And then of course, we're gonna do mascara and lashes, but I save that to the end. 
So now because our mask is just one shade, we need to contour and highlight. So I'm gonna be going with the Benefit Hoola Bronzer and I've actually just been really liking using the brush that it comes with because it just puts it right in that line that I want it to. So the line is from the corner of your lip to the top of the ear. So you're gonna start at the top of the ear and you're just gonna kind of put that product in, it, in her place, in her assigned seat. Now, when we apply contour, we're not bringing it down. We're not brushing down, we're not brushing to our, our chin or anything. We are brushing up and back to give the face a more lifted look. Put a little bit on there. Don't be shy, put some more. So if you can see, I just have a more darkened look there. Do the other side. I go underneath my chin in case, you know, you've been eating good underneath the chin. Then I go on the hairline of my forehead kind of more on either side. So I'll place the product and then I'll brush it around, give the forehead a more narrow appearance, make it look like you got no forehead. Hell no. Nah. So again, with that same brush, because I'm psychotic that way, I dab on the side of my nose. And this is Maria's nose contour. It does not go any deeper than this. It does not go any fancier than this. We just dab whatever product was on here and we put it on the outside because we don't need to be snatching our nose too much, at least not in my opinion. And then I grab a, another just ploofy brush. This one is by Steel? Still? Still. I don't know. Still, it's not Stila. And I'm gonna grab that powder and I'm gonna put it under my lip because if you know me you know I love to make it look like I got fake big lips and then I usually use this just to darken up the contour on the side of my nose I know hear me out so because stage lighting is usually very bright you can go a little bit heavier with the contour but I wouldn't go too heavy because I think sometimes it's you know it's a little bit nicer to go more natural rather than to have it be you're on stage and then your contour and makeup is so dark and the judges are like whoa what happened so don't feel like it needs to be the darkest it's ever been i'm gonna keep it like that you want to bronze the whole look so i go in with the Too faced chocolate soleil and another big poof poofy brush this one's by quo and in all honesty i just kind of like haphazardly just put it on the outer part of my cheek to bronze and bronze and bronze and on my neck and ooh, just everywhere everywhere i want bronzer all over my body and this, this smells so good every time and i will say i like i don't i don't go away from these products these are the products i use every day when i do my makeup there is nothing else just so you're aware so you don't need to spend a ton of money on a ton of different products find your tried and trues and use those and of course on the forehead. Next, we wanna bring a little bit more color back to the skin. So I'm gonna use Milani in blush in the shade Luminoso, in the shade in the name Luminoso. And I have this Morphe M530 blush brush. You can tell it's got a lot of pink on it, so pretty, but blush always fades. So I think it's okay to go a little bit heavier. You can see we're just adding some color back almost just broke that I always do a little bit on the nose and just a little bit on the chin just to like bring it all together and we put it on the apples of our cheeks up and blended with our contour so you can see it's just bringing a little bit of pink back to the skin and again just now we're now we're getting crazy okay Before I go and do my lips and my eyelashes, what I'm gonna do is highlight, and this is my favorite tip that my sister Vanessa showed me, so thank you, Vanessa. We're gonna use the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. And I have, um, I have this one, it is, this one's hard candy. Oh my gosh, it's 
not old, but it's just an older product. So this is their baked bronzer in Tiki, but it's actually a highlighter. So what Vanessa told me to do, it's actually broken, that's fine, is with a highlighter brush, this is the Morphe M501. Get, get the product on your brush, go in there. Don't be shy, put some more, don't be shy. You see we got a generous amount on there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna spray our face and we're gonna drench it. First of all, we wanna set it in place. Then you go in with highlight. And it's just supposed to make that highlight like wanna punch you in the face or something like that. I don't know if she said something like that. Do you see it? It's like the Napolitank. Is that what it's called? Napoleon? The, the Napoleon ice cream where it's like the brown, the strawberry or the chocolate strawberry vanilla. Ooh, yes. Chapman's ice cream, please call me. I'd love to chat with you. Then I put a little bit on the nose, a little bit on the Cupid's bow. Never have too much highlight. Hopefully you can see it, yeah. You can totally see that. And this isn't even like the best highlighter. I'm sure there are other better highlighters out there and that is fine. And on top of it, now our face is set. You don't need to set your face, but hello, like I said, if you're in 120 degree weather or 80% humidity, you're gonna wanna set your makeup. Now we're gonna go and do the lips. So one recommendation, if you have really dry lips or your lips are really dry from you know, wearing makeup every day, especially when it comes to the end of your pageant week, I recommend using the MAC Prep and Prime. It is a kind of like clear type of like lip primer. It just kind of helps to bring that hydration back and it helps your makeup stick a little, your lipstick at least, stick a little bit better. I have a plethora of pink lip products right now because I wanted to give you all a wide variety because I typically start off with, these are a lot of Milani products. Milani in, this is the lip liner in Nude. Then, depending on the occasion, how my lips are feeling, I'll either go in with Milani, the lipstick in Nude Creme, I have NYX Butter Gloss in Tiramisu. Uh, this is the Milani Amore Matte Lip Cream in Precious. Or the Gerard Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick in Serenity. This is old, this is old. This should probably be thrown out, but that's okay. I just wanted to show you. You can see they are five different pink lippies that you can go with depending on the occasion. And it's like matte, super duper duper matte, the lip liner, creamy, and lip gloss. So there you go, do with that what you will. I'm gonna go in with the lip liner first and you know, we just playing tricks. We just, we're gonna, un I'm not gonna talk during this, but we're gonna overline our lip. So I only overlined and lined the outer part of my lips and generously over top because your girl's got small doll, small doll lips. Then I'm gonna go in with the Amori Matte Lip Cream, like I said, by Milani. This is super matte and we're gonna go over all of that. There you have it. That is our, our lips. Nice pink shade. I like pink because I just think it brings a little bit more of a youthful vibe to the overall look. You know, especially if you're in gown, you want to have that very like soft, elegant, radiant look. Off camera, I'm going to go do my lashes and my false lashes. I'm back. And off camera, I applied mascara. I used the MAC mascara. I used the MAC Duo brush on lips. I don't know. The, the lash adhesive in dark and... I forget which ones, uh, these are the C99 MAC lashes. So we went all MAC for the eyes. But here you can see the finished look. I might just bring it in the light so you can totally be able to appreciate it. But this is my pretty standard pageant glam look, appearance look, photo shoot look. Obviously sometimes I mix around the colors, I'll change around the lipstick, but this is pretty much my go-to. And now you can see we're in the light. Looks very pretty, very soft and romantic, if I do say so myself. Are we in, are we in focus? You could be a little close up there. Nice cat eye appearance. You can see we have the blush, bronzer, highlight. I love it. I love feeling glam. I love feeling beautiful. And sometimes makeup just has the ability to do that a little bit more. 
Um, so I hope you all enjoyed. This is probably gonna be super long, I apologize. It took me about an hour to film it, but I wanted to give you as much detail as I could. And if you do want more tips on doing your makeup for pageants, I am hosting a makeup class in my practice, prepare, and win plan on my memberships, for my memberships on my website if you do want. Um, if you do want, you can go purchase one of those and we'll do a makeup class together in February. And it'll just go into more detail about like lashes, um, baking and things like that when it comes to contour and face, things like that. But other than that, I hope that you all enjoyed and I'm also going to be giving you a few links to some other videos that you might wanna go check out to help you do your makeup flawlessly for your pageant. That's all for today. I hope to see you soon. Go ahead, follow me. I will link all of my different social media below. And if you need any more questions, I'm here to help you. Bye.